What do we do when we're faced with a situation that because of our tripod position and composition we have, we have some flat lighting coming in behind us. That flat lighting is creating an ugly representation of our space. We can't flag or close any blinds on the windows because of the position of the tripod. What do we do? Let's figure it out. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and for those of you who are new, my name is Fraser Almeida. I'm a photographer based here in Las Vegas, Nevada and I specialize in architecture, interior design and luxury real estate. Today we're going to be breaking down some of my images that I've shot for my clients and just showing you how I shot them on site and edited them back at the computer in Lightroom and Photoshop to finally deliver them to my client. So today I primarily want to focus on the main living room area of an interior design space I shot for my client here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I mainly want to focus on just the living room because I want to show you guys, even though we're going to get a couple of various angles of it, that at the end of the day, we still have to deliver consistent results. And because of the various angles we're shooting, we're going to be combating various lighting conditions that will either benefit or detract from the end result and how we combat that. Whether we're using some of that natural light or we're adding supplemental lighting to deliver that final end result. And remember guys, we are months away from this year's 2023 PMRE conference here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's gonna be our fifth year anniversary and I can't wait to see you all there. Remember, if any of you are photographers, videographers, or in any type of media, this is the place to be. It's a place to learn, grow, and connect with so many people in this industry. I can't wait to see you all there. It's gonna be another great year once again. And don't forget to join that wait list. Go to pmreconference.com to join that waitlist because in May, those early bird tickets go on sale. They sell out very, very fast and you wanna be the first ones to get it. And make sure guys to follow PMRE online, whether it's the website or social media, because we have some big announcements coming in spring. All right guys, without further ado, let's get to this image breakdown. So here's our first composition. And as you can see here, we have that ugly flat light coming in behind us. It's a one point perspective, looking at the scene of the living room and the kitchen, but because of the position of the tripod, you can't see here, I'm actually positioned outside a sliding glass door. And because I'm positioned outside, I can't close those doors. And if you actually see here in the next frame, you can see these, window, these sliding doors are actually open. So if I just show you real quick. So my camera is actually positioned out here in the balcony area, facing towards this direction, giving me that one point perspective. But because of that, these glass windows, I can't drop the blinds down and cover it, otherwise it's gonna mess up my composition. And I can't really flag it because I have to have those windows open. I mean, I guess if you really, really wanted to, you could try to flag maybe the balcony itself out there to, to stop that light, but that's just way too much work and I don't have that much time to, to do that. As a matter of fact, it was just me by myself that day. I didn't have my assistant, so it would have been really difficult to try to flag that entire balcony. So how do we overcome that? Well, we know with using supplemental lighting, we have the ability, if you have enough power in your light, you can kill that ambient light. So you don't have to worry about that flat lighting because you can introduce your own light and your own direction to the light to create an exact representation of the space that you want. Rather than accepting the scene for what it is, you create the results that you wanna deliver for your client. So let's take a look at how we broke down that first image and built it up to make it look good for the end result to our client. So now that you guys kind of get a scope of exactly what we have to deal with, as you can see, we have a lot of things we have to combat. Number one, look at the flat light coming here into the scene. It just, there's no direction. There's no shape to any of this furniture. It's just flat lighting coming all into the scene, all onto the walls. Doesn't do anything, any justice for the, the, the property. And also this back area here is just really dark. No detail there at all. So we want to make sure that when we're lighting this, First of all, analyze the scene and determine what you want as the end result. We know as professionals, and as you get into this industry, as you get into this field, instead of accepting the scene for what it is, create and deliver what you want to deliver for your client rather than just accepting for what it is. The first thing I look at when I'm doing this is, okay, where are my light sources coming in from? Number one, we have the light coming in from the windows, right? So that's coming from the back of the camera into the scene, right? creating that flat light. We also have these overhead lights, right? 
And those overhead lights, we can use that to our advantage because we can kind of fake that we have some light coming in here. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretty much use those overhead lights as my main light source. And I'm going to choose to not show exactly where the light, the true light's coming from, which is behind the camera from those windows. I'm going to pretend like the main light source is getting lit from the ceiling lights into the scene. That way it represents the space better. You have more shape and depth to the actual space rather than just that boring flat light. So let's take a look at this into the end result so you can see how we went from this flat image to something a little more directional and more justified with the light that's created rather than accepting the light that is given. So here's the final edit for this scene. As you can see, we don't have that flat light anymore. We have a nice color representation of the space and we have some nice directionality to the scene as well. Look at the shadows and look at the fall off coming from the, the light direction. We have some nice shape to this furniture giving us some three dimensionality to it. The nice fall off coming from the shadows. We have some nice contrast and nice texture on, onto the floor, onto the areas of the rug, even these pillowcases over here. And even if you look, look at the shadows on the walls here. We have some nice fall off here, adding that shape and direction to the scene. Because at the end of the day, we want all our attention to go in this direction, right? This is pretty much our main focus. We want to just try to get to the, that couch and eventually towards that back area where that kitchen was, is at. That previous photo, the ambient shot, you saw it was very difficult to get back there. One, it was too dark, and two, because of that flat lighting, it was just keeping everything there in the foreground. Nothing was allowing us to get past that foreground element. This way, adding the supplemental lighting, we're actually creating that direction and flow into the space rather than stopping us in just the foreground. We're actually able to move through it and actually enjoy the different areas the space has to provide. So let's take a look at this into Photoshop and so you guys can see exactly how I lit this and how I built this layer by layer to get the end result. So here we are in Photoshop and I'm just going to build this up layer by layer so you can see exactly what we had to work with. Number one, look at what we had to start with. This is our base ambient shot and we went from that to that, right? I mean, it's a huge difference. Way better directionality, way better, way better representation of the space rather than just accepting this boring flat light. So let's build this up little by little. So primarily what I like to do when I'm starting to edit in Photoshop is find that image that gives me a close enough representation of what I want the end result to look like and then build everything up from there. So as you guys can see here, I'm pointing the light behind the cam I'm sorry, behind the couch and because of that, it's giving me that beautiful light fall off onto the furniture areas of the scene and that is allowing us to get some directionality into the space rather than that boring flat light that we had before with our ambient photo. So let's build this up slowly one by one. Here's our starting off point. This is our uh, flash layer here. And then we have our next one here. This one's pretty much all this is, is I'm standing over here, but the only reason I have this is just to remove myself from the previous shot. So if you see here, that's with me there and that's with me gone just by using the other frame and just uh, brushing myself out of there. Don't worry about the, ce the, the ceiling. We're going to fix that later on. Let's keep going here. Our next layer here is our, our uh, kitchen in the background. So if you see here, I'm on light mode, but I'm just going to put to normal. And I'm, I'm at 63% on opacity, but you can see me standing over there. So I'm just bouncing light on the ceiling, getting some nice light onto the uh, kitchen area back there. So just turn that to lighten mode. Next. Here's another area there. So if we turn this off, you can see I'm standing somewhat in the middle of the kitchen, uh, angling the light up, bouncing, and getting some nice light onto the right side of that kitchen. Same thing there. I'm on light mode. This time I kept it at 100%. Let's keep going. Now, if you see here, if you see this right side area here, with this off, there's a little bit of shadow there, but it's not enough. I want some more directionality to the space. So I'm adding that shadow back in. So if we turn this on and you can see I'm flashing over here and I like the way that shadow looks there. So 
I'm literally only keeping just that area there. So if you see off and on, that shadow is helping us to get that flow into the space, that directionality of where the light's coming from and leading us from the foreground towards the back. Rather than stopping us, it's actually guiding us towards that back. So I'm trying to keep everything represented well with the direction of how the light is actually getting produced with the light I'm creating rather than that flat lighting, right? So let's keep going. Here's the next one here. So this one is this little side area over here where the, uh, the cabinets are at. So if you see here, same thing. Do you see before how flat that looks? Flat and boring, right? And it doesn't, it's not consistent with the way the shadow is falling off with these walls here. So the same thing, I just went around. You see, I use this frame here where I'm popping light in the middle of the kitchen. And I just use that to give me that nice shadow fall off of that left side area there. So that's off and on. Next. So if we zoom in here, because we're adding light and whatnot, we're getting some crazy reflections there. So I pretty much used a, a, a layer that didn't have that. And I just kind of fixed that for the bottles back there. Let's keep going. So same thing here. This one was a little bit too hot on the left side where these uh, panels are for the design element. So I just kind of toned that down just a hair so it's not so, so hot. Let's keep going. This was a little bit of a, you can barely see it, but there's a, a fall off here that's coming with the, the light that I'm adding into the scene. And I didn't really like the shadow that's right there. So I just kind of fixed that and then I toned that down a little bit so to blend it in. And then now here's our ceiling. So we bring that in and then I just killed the hue, killed that um, color cast onto that ceiling with the hue saturation layer. So that's off and on. That looks good. And then next I used the curves just to brighten it, brighten up this foreground element a little bit more, a little bit too dark. So I just kind of brushed in with the curves, um, some little bit more brightness there in the center. Next. So if you see this uh, hanging art piece here, these are just literally all they are, are black frames, but they're different shapes. You have a square, a, a rectangle, a, 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 a thinner rectangle, but they're just black shapes, but the reflections on it didn't look good. It looked very faded. So I just brought in a black frame and uh, uh, killed the opacity to 50% on that just so that it doesn't look so uh, faded. So it kind of helps that out a little bit. And then lastly, the, that view right there, there's nothing to that view. We don't care about looking at the neighbors um, through that window. So I just brought in an ambient frame and dropped it to 50% uh, luminosity to just kill that so it doesn't look so um, detailed. We don't need the, all that detail into the, the windows. We just keep it nice and bright and, and that's it. So that's it. We save that and we're gonna, let's take this back into Lightroom. And then we just add a couple little touches. So this is the the final, right, from uh, Photoshop. So pretty much all we added was our highlights, dropped it down just to here, opened up the shadows just a bit, added some blacks, texture, and clarity. And then other than that, we use our transform tool, tool to add some grid lines to just make sure we have a nice um, leveled image so it's nice and uh, symmetrical and um, uh, in a perfect one point. And then besides that, as much as I like the way this looks, but there's just way too much ceiling on top of this. So I just did my favorite crop, which was a 16 by nine crop. And as you can see, going from this to this, what a big difference and how much more attention you get to the actual space rather than seeing more of that ceiling. There's no reason to see all that ceiling. And that's it. So just remember when you're faced with a situation like this, step back, take your time, look around and determine what do we need to do to make this the result that we want rather than accepting it for what it is. Whether it's using supplemental lighting or whether it's using the natural lighting, sometimes that natural light actually helps the scene and you don't even need any supplemental lighting at all. But at the end of the day, it's our experience, our talent, our vision of what we want as the end result that's gonna make that delivery to our client a good one and a, a very well represented one rather than just accepting that scene 
for what it is. All right, guys, let's take a look at the next image. So this is our next image, and primarily, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look that bad compared to our previous shot where we had that directionality coming from behind our camera, creating that flat, boring light. The light that's coming in here, it's actually representing the space better, but it doesn't look as good because we have some competing light with the sunlight coming in and the interior lighting as well. What is happening here is we do have some nice represent representation of direction to the space. So we get some fall off here on the furniture areas, which I like that. Into the backs here, into these chairs, that looks good. But it doesn't represent it well. The colors don't look good. We have a lot of mixed lighting. The textures don't really pop and it just still looks flat. Even though we have some direction to it, it still looks flat and boring, and we need to add some pop and crunch to the image so that it represents the space way better than just this ambient photo itself. Besides that, we do have to tackle this back area here. It's a little bit way too hot, so adding some light to that will be able to kill some of that highlight so we can tone that down a bit. And then, other than that, there is this balcony out here that I, I do wanna keep but what I don't need to care for is this neighbors in the back. So I'm going to let that go, but I am going to tone it down a little bit so we get a better representation of the, the color and feel of that balcony area. Um, and that's it. Besides that, we do want to add a couple flames here that the client requested that we put into the fireplace. But when I'm lighting the scene, my primary goal is to bring the light and direction from the main light source, which are those huge big window so all my direction of flow is going to be coming from those windows so i'm lighting it from that direction so we continue to keep the exact same light fall off of the shadows but just a better color textured represented represented image rather than what's given from the ambient shot so let's take a look at the final edit on this image and how it compares to the ambient so here's our final edit and as you can see Look how much better the color and the space feels with the light added into the scene. Rather than that boring flat light that was originally there in that ambient frame, adding that supplemental lighting helped us to combat many, many things. Number one, we fixed that hotspot back there. Number two, look at the colors and the pretty light fall off with the shadows coming into the scene. I love the way all the fall off is here onto the various furniture elements into the scene. It looks very, very well, and it's giving us that direction and justification of that light coming into the scene. Everything we want it to come in from these windows, right? And even that balcony, look at it. It's, it's beautiful. You don't get too much attention to the neighbors. You do get a hint of it because we don't want to let it go full out, blown out white, but we don't really have a lot of information back there. My primary focus is in this main area here of the balcony, which is perfect. Other than that, look at the beautiful light fall off and the texture represented well onto the furniture and to the carpet. It looks really, really good. That previously, the carpet didn't look as good. It, you lost that three-dimensional shape to it because of the, the mixed lighting and the, the, the flat light still coming from that main light source, which were those windows. And then other than that, we fixed our fireplace area here. So we added those flames in there. And that's it. So let's take a look at this real quick in Lightroom and Photoshop, how we built this up so you guys can see the final result. Let's start off with that base ambient layer so you guys can see exactly like, look at that. So this is where we started off with, which is our base ambient, and this is our final result, right? What a difference. So let's build this up slowly. So remember what we talked about. The first thing I want to do, number one, is find the light based off of what I shot that looks close enough to the end result of what I want and then clean it up and build it up from there. So right off the bat, because I'm wanting to represent the light coming from the windows, that's what I'm going with. I'm standing here bouncing off the ceiling and that light is giving me that pretty light fall off and shadow onto the various furniture elements into the scene. Next, my second light here, I'm off in the right side distance, but that light is pretty much used to remove myself from the composition. Next. Very, very subtle, but because of this glass fixture right here, it's getting all the reflections from the, the flash. So I just kind of killed that by using one of the other ambient frames. All right, so here's our next layer here. And as you can see, because we 
are using supplemental lighting, we're killing the ambient uh, light into the scene. And because of that, we have a dark area now instead of that really bright hot spot. But because it's dark, now we have to add light to it. So I pretty much flash the light over there. And I have the blend mode on screen. I'm, I'm at 100%. Next. So here we're just fix, fixing all the hot spots on the ceiling. So we're pretty much bringing in an ambient frame into the, the, the composition. And then we're adding a curves to brighten that up. And then a hue saturation just to kill off any of the yellow that's there from the uh, ambient colors. Next. I just did a, uh, a couple luminosity masks here just to add some more detail into the blown out areas back there. So if you see before, after, it's very, very subtle, very, very subtle, not too much, but just enough that it's not too, it's not too bright back there. So that looks pretty good. Next, here's our windows. Now, hang in there for a second because obviously there's no way I'm going to keep it this dark. So this is pretty much using our ambient uh, photo, tweaking it in Lightroom so that it looks good and then uh, pen, tuning, pen tooling it into these windows and masking it. So we just pretty much are just adding that back in. Next, adding a levels to it to brighten it up and as well, adding a curves to it as well. Next, here's our TV. Just to make a selection out of that, around that, add black and then one more. Just add a gradient to it from the direction of where those windows are coming from. And then over here, here's our fireplace. Adding a, a fire from a flame that I've taken from another previous photo shoot. When you guys are shooting, whether it's um, real estate or interior design, architecture, whatever, sometimes you get situations where you get these really nice fireplaces that are gas lit. When you guys find those, take the time to just grab a couple of frames just of a one point perspective of that so that you have it in your archive library to bring back in situation like this. You just mask around it, change the blend mode to screen, and you're good to go. And you can pop it into somebody else's fireplace and nobody would even know. And then lastly, right now, everything that's here is pretty much primarily all flash with a little bit of ambient blended in. But it's just way too flashy looking right now. We still want to make something represented and not too flashy something that feels better of what the space was like rather than it just being killed with just all this flash light. So all we're going to do is just bring in an ambient layer. So if we show you here, let me just change this to normal. So this is the ambient layer. I'm just going to put it back to 100% so you can see. So that original ambient layer that we had on the bottom, I pretty much used that and I'm going to use this to blend it back in so it doesn't look so flashy and retain some of that little bit of that natural feel. So all I'm doing is changing this to 50% and changing the blend mode to luminosity. So we're only introducing the values of the, the, the darks and the shadows rather than any other, any other color information. All that color information is there from the flash lighting that we added into that. And then other than that, we put a mask on top of it so that we're only targeting certain areas we want that to be shown. I don't want it to ruin, because if you take a look here, if I take off this mask, you see it's actually get, it's killing all that nice work I did with the light fall off on the couches and uh, the furniture, which I don't want that. So by adding a mask, I can target exactly where I want this layer to fall into the image. So it's only in the general areas that I want. So if I take this off and on, so as you can see, this is without that ambient for, uh, layer, and this is with it. And just how much more natural it looks rather than it, than it being way too flashy. We wanna try to avoid that way over flash look because it just, it's not real, right? We wanna bring back some realism. And by just bringing back that uh, ambient frame, we're able to do that. And that's it, so let's save that, bring it back into Lightroom. And same thing here, if you notice, we have a little bit way too much ceiling there, so my favorite crop, 16 by 9. There we go. We kind of kill that ceiling, and we bring all our attention right into that main area of the living room. And then other than that, simple, just drop the highlights a little bit, added some blacks, texture and clarity, and then once again, went to our transform tool, and just add some grid lines here to the right and the left side, and that's it. Leveled it out and called it a day. So same thing like before, and 
if you notice, our process was the same from the first image to the second image. And we do that so that we keep things consistent so that when the client's looking at those images, there's a flow to it and not making him step back and be like, wait a minute, something feels off. We want to keep things consistent. So by doing that, it helps us to deliver a consistent result for our client. All right, guys, let's take a look at our next image. All right, guys, just like the other two previous images, we're going to approach this the exact same way. Our primary light source is coming from these windows. So we want to make sure our light fall off and shadows are coming from that direction, which is going to give us a beautiful fall off here on these furniture elements and some nice representation of the color and texture onto the rug, onto the floor, and even into the fireplace area here, we'll get some nice fall off and color representation there. We'll add our flames in here, right, from our previous shoot that we're gonna introduce back into there. And that's it, this one isn't too difficult. We do have those same windows that we do not wanna enhance anything back there, but we do wanna showcase the main area there, which is that seating area back there where the balcony is at. And that's it, very simple. Let's take a look at the final edit on this one. And look at that, very beautiful. I love the fall off here. I love the color, the representation of the space, the textures, the furniture, everything looks good. We got the fall off coming from these windows, right? Like we talked about. We got the beautiful shadow coming here onto the furniture elements. Love the color and texture of the floor. Even the, the, the color and the, you can see the texture onto the, the tile here onto the ground. Fireplace looks really good. We got some fall off here and we fixed our nice little flames in there and that's it. I mean, it wasn't too difficult. Remember, even here, we have some detail into the balcony, but it's not so much where you have to put too much attention to it. So we let this area here go a little hot so it's not so detailed and so there on purpose to draw our eye to it. We don't want really our eye going there because there's really nothing there to see. So we kind of let that go, let it blow out a little bit. But look at our information for where the chairs and the other areas of the balconies are. That looks good and I'm happy with that. So simple, very simple and consistent. Remember we talked about keeping these consistent. So we pretty much just use the exact same editing approach on this one as well. So let's take a look at this back on Lightroom and Photoshop and see how we built this one up. All right, so let's take a look at what we started off with. Here's our ambient photo, and as you can see, we have a lot of things we need to tackle here. So by just adding that supplemental lighting, we can create something that delivers a better representation of the space. So let's build this up slowly. So remember, I want to start off my, my layers with the primary layer that represents the image that I want for the end result and then build it up from there. So because of that, my primary uh, layer I'm gonna be using is with me flashing from the window position, bouncing light and getting the nice shadow fall off there. Next, I'm just adding light here to that right side area. Now we're gonna remove myself. So I'm just using another layer here. I'm off to the right so that that's giving me some uh, light over there, so I'm just gonna remove myself out. So that's before and after. Next, I didn't like how the, because I'm bouncing light, it's hitting this back table there. That doesn't look right. It should be dark there. So I kind of brought that back to the natural luminance. It should be there. And I just kind of fix that left side area there with the curves layer. Next. This is another layer here, so let's look at, I'm standing here onto the left and bouncing light to the right side area, which is giving me the pretty fall off here onto the, the, the furniture on the right side where the chairs are at. So we go off and on. So look at the right side chairs and look at the backs of these pillows here in the middle of the, the couch. I love the way that looks. So we're just adding in those shadows of exactly what we want. Next, here's our ceiling. So we're just bringing that back in to fix any of those hot spots that we were bouncing on the ceiling. So added a curves to brighten that up. Hue saturation to kill off some of that color cast. Next, same thing here. I just used a curves layer to brighten up this center area here. It's a little bit too dark. So just use a curves to just brighten that up. 
Next. Here's my windows. But remember, this is just a starting off point. We're going to tie it all in at the end once we bring in that ambient frame. Use the levels to bump it up a hair. Same thing with the curves. Next. So this one, I'm just trying to add some more of the ambient glow to those windows. Here, I got the TV taken care of and then add in the gradient coming from the window direction. Next, if you can see here, let me zoom in. I didn't like these wires back here. You see the hanging over here on the underneath of these, uh, this table. So I just kind of removed that so it doesn't look there and obvious. Next, here's our fireplace. So just kind of adding that in there. As you see, you can see I have it on the blend mode of screen. And then here, if you notice, let me just zoom in. There's a little bit of yellow happening here on the on this uh, back of this couch. So just use your hue saturation layer to just kind of kill some of that off. I didn't like that yellow. And then last, just to kind of clean it all up and add that finishing touch. We added that same ambient layer. So if I take this off, I go to 100%. <clears throat> and we, here we are with uh, normal mode. So this is that same ambient layer we started off with. And I'm just pretty much adding that back in and changing this to 50%. Just to uh, kill some of that detail going into the view back there. And also bringing back that natural feel rather than it being too flashy, right? We're trying to kill that flashiness and try to make it look a little bit more realistic to what it really was there, right? That's it. Then we save that, bring it back into Lightroom. And same thing, this is our original composition. Went with this 16 by nine crop and killed off some of that ceiling and leveled this thing out. Added some, let's see here, we did highlights. Dropped the highlights of hair, added some white uh, shadows. Uh, blacks, texture, clarity, and then we just made sure that we had it nice and leveled. So we grabbed our transform tool and we used this uh, tile on the floor for our, our bottom and then the left right side and the the window frame here to level it all level it all out for a nice one point pers perspective composition. And that's it. And then I had one more image I want to show you guys just really, really quick. I want to show you something. So Besides the obvious composi compositions that we already shot, the client wanted specifically to focus on the rug and the different various elements of that space. So that being said, I needed a detail shot. So with the detail shot, let me show you what I have here. So let me show you the before. So here's our before photo of the detail shot. This is just the ambient frame from the camera. And this is the composition that I shot, nice and tight. Um, something that really shows off the various elements of that space, which is the furniture and the flooring. And I just think it flows nicely. It allows you to start from the bottom left and, and flow to the top right of this image. But obviously, the light that's coming in from that, those windows is creating a very ugly flat light, and it doesn't represent the space or colors very well. So by adding light to this, we can actually fix that and deliver something really, really really nice. So if you notice here, just by adding light, this is literally just one light, how it really enhances this scene and the mood into this area. So the colors, the, the textures, everything looks perfect. And we didn't have to do too much, just adding one light. And let me show you really quick here in Lightroom so you can see. So here's our ambient frame, right, that we were working with. But check this out. It took a minute. I was just going around, but this is why we experiment and we, we, we keep trying until we find something that works. So I'm here just flashing light, trying to go around the scene to find something that flows good. Like here, this is way too, too bright. And it's still, it's, it's actually looks, it's flat, right? It's just a better color representation, but it's still flat. We want to make sure we have some, we want some direction to this, right? So here, I'm just kind of walking around. This is getting better. I like it, but uh, I didn't really like the way the, the fall off of the shadows were happening here. Same thing here. This was a little bit way too dark. And then here, nice, not too bad. And then eventually we, we finished and landed on our final, which was this one here. 
I like the way the light that was coming into here, adding some nice texture to the 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 furniture here onto the the the, um, the rug itself, and just giving some nice depth, mood, and flow into the image. And that's it, guys. Remember, when you're in these type of situations, just at the end of the day, just take your time and don't rush it. Just take the time to step back, analyze the scene, and determine what you want your end goal to be, and then start from there and just get your frames, get your layers, bring it back to the computer and deliver this final photo for your client. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me on this image breakdown. I hope you guys found some nuggets of knowledge that you can take back to your own situation when you're shooting and editing for your clients so you can deliver that final result that you want rather than just accepting the scene for what it is. And guys, remember, like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and allows me to continue to make these type of videos. Until next time, guys, keep on chewing and I'll see you then. <laughs>